The BBC collection is a, is a world collection, not just because it tells the story of the BBC and its very early pioneering days of radio and television, but really because it tells the story of broadcasting in the whole of the UK. The museum has a responsibility to tell the whole story of broadcasting, encompassing radio, and this collection fills a gap. This collection is really uh, complementing what we already have because the collection that we've been collecting really up till now at the museum has been aiming at television. By acquiring the BBC collection, it allows us to place other parts of the national television collection in a greater context and probably makes the national television collection now the best of its kind anywhere in the world. It's a very rich collection which numbers amongst its objects some really fantastic iconic objects, some real firsts. This is the BBC iconic microphone, it's called the AXBT microphone. Because it is a ribbon microphone, it suffers from a phenomenon which is called bass tip-up. And that means that instead of speaking at this distance, if I were to bring the microphone closer and speak into it from this distance, the bass notes, the bass sounds are accentuated, which gives a very warm, distinct sound to the audio. And this meant that people, particularly those in occupied Europe, when they tuned into the BBC, it had a characteristic sound that no other radio station had. When you have an object, you also have a story that comes with it. And we need to preserve both of those things. This was the microphone that was actually used, this type of microphone, when Edward VIII abdicated the throne to be with Wallace Simpson, the American divorcee. This rather boring looking grey box with a big letter A on it is in fact an oboe and it was developed in the post-war period when the BBC started recording particularly classical symphonies. So this is an electronic tuning signal that the orchestra tuned to. Normally in an orchestra when you tune up you tune to the oboe because the oboe is the one instrument in the orchestra that you cannot tune. And the design of this is such that if the electronics does go wrong, it no longer sounds like an oboe. It makes a horrible squawking noise to warn people that it's gone faulty. But there were particular broadcast challenges that the BBC engineers had to overcome. And they specifically took off-the-shelf products and made them almost bespoke. Do you know what time it is? Well, if you don't, you need this. This was the microphone which for many years was fitted inside the bell of Big Ben. Right back in 1922 when the BBC first started broadcasting, if you wanted to know the correct time, you had to set off from wherever you lived and walk to the nearest railway station with your watch and set your watch against the station clock and that was the most accurate time signal that you could get. So when the BBC started, they realised that what they could do was they could broadcast the correct time into everybody's home. And it was so successful and so popular that they installed a microphone permanently inside Big Ben. I think this collection, it really is kind of like filling in a mi missing piece of the puzzle within the Media Museum's collections. We're giving this collection to the National Media Museum because here you have, in this wonderful museum, expertise, curatorial scholarship, illuminating ways of telling stories around the objects and their significance and I think that will be a wonderful place to bring these objects, to bring them to life, not just for the current generation but for generations to come.